Um, I'm delighted to be here in Dubai. It's my first time here and um, it was great. Um, I was uh, traveling within an airplane here, so I didn't have to take a ship, which would take me at least three or six weeks to come here. So um, aviation delivers a very big benefit for our society. Um, in other words, and this is very radical, we call aviation the real World Wide Web because it connects us physically. And this is important for different reasons. And um, I assume that most of you have flown in an airplane and have enjoyed uh, the pleasure of being um, in different places or to have a business meeting somewhere. Um, today I want to talk a little bit um, about the story behind the concept plane which we have created um, already two years ago. And um, it's still fascinating. It's fascinating, fascinating for our engineers, but as well we can attract um, the audience like you because it's quite radical. And um, it um, turns out that, that um, this kind of thinking is required as we have learned from the speakers before. Um, I'm working in an innovation department called Cabin Innovation and Strategy and um, maybe you are familiar with this. Maybe some of you know Asterix and Obelix. Uh, when you are working in an innovation department inside a big company, it's exactly like this. So you as a small village, as an innovation department, you are surrounded by the Roman Empire. So by a lot of engineers who are, um, are fighting against you, more or less. So um, we give them a challenge and they give us a challenge. And um, it's, it's a very fruitful business, but uh, it's, it's very challenging, I can tell you. But it's a lot of fun, of course. Um, so in in some cases, you are confronted with statements like this. So this is from Lord Kelvin from the late um, 19th century, and he didn't believe that uh, heavier than air flying machines would ever exist. So, um, well, today we know that he's wrong, but um, he said this for some reasons. He's, he said this based on um, his assumptions, based on the technology which was available in, in the late um, 19th century. Um, so he, he never could imagine that something like this happens here. Uh, the, bro the brothers Wright um, were the first people who were flying in, in an um, engine-powered um, airplane. But also they could not imagine that um, there will be ever commercial flights from New York to Paris. Today we connect the entire world and, um, well, Next week or tomorrow, the Dubai Air Show starts. Uh, many people from all over the world will come to Dubai and um, enjoy this experience at the air show there. So again, here, based on existing technologies, uh, it, they could not imagine to, to fly around the world. Um, at least, I think they had this flying machine uh, in, in their mind, which, which you can see here. And um, I, I think it would be um, a very dramatic experience for them to fly um, over the Atlantic Ocean with this kind of um, <laughs> flying machine. Um, however, um, to turn this uh, a little bit around, um, there are a lot of people who create their own vision about the future. And I want to show you this picture here. This picture is from also from the early um, 20th century. And um, I have to translate it for you. It's in old German letters written. It says here, it's the seaplane of the future. So um, it's, it's a seaplane, and um, it connects um, Hamburg with um, America. So in, in the early 20th century in um, Germany, especially in Hamburg, um, America was totally fancy, um, the land of our dreams. And um, so when engineers created uh, these ideas about flying machines, they used to connect some town in Germany with America. <laughs> and um, it says here that it's a very large plane and it um, offers very modern comfort. And it just takes one and a half days to cross the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> Imagine one and a half days inside a very dense area uh, where you sit next to people which start snoring while you're in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. That's not very funny. Um, and also here we can see that the assumptions are not right. We, we do not have these large um, seaplanes. Um, I want to show you a picture of the A380 um, here because we have the biggest fleet right around the corner here in 
Dubai, and um, you can see this is um, an airplane which has a similar size than uh, the plane I showed you before. And um, it's, it starts from land, it, it doesn't start from the sea. Um, and you, you can fit 800 people into this, and it also uh, offers a lot of comfort. But finally, it's a completely technical different approach, and thank God it doesn't take one and a half days to cross the Atlantic with it. So you, you can fly over the ocean uh, within six to eight hours. Um, when we created our concept cabin, we were, we were thinking very much about the passenger and um, which kind of um, yeah, requirements different kind of passenger segments have. And today I want to introduce you to um, two kind of passenger segments. It won't be a big surprise for you, so uh, we still will be human beings in the future. Um, but finally, we are focusing very much on the graying society at the moment. Um, we can see that in 2030, 1.4 billion people almost will be more, uh, older than 60 years. This is a trend which affects Japan very much, but also China, and finally Germany as well. And um, this addresses uh, the needs to um, people which, no, how can I say, I, I don't want to say who have pro problems to move, um, but um, who need to be um, supported while being in the airplane. And um, we, we have to tell them how to store their luggage. Maybe the luggage bins are too high. So they have different requirements uh, on how to use um, a commercial aircraft cabin. The cabin must be very, very accessible to them, also from the colors we um, use. Some colors can't be seen when you are getting older, so yeah, you have this uh, green and red blindness, um, so it's, it's, it's not a good idea to use many colors of, of those, because um, you, you cannot see the difference anymore when you're getting older. But finally, these people are uh, very important for us, because we believe that these people have saved some money, and um, when they are retired, what are they doing? Yes, they travel around the world, um, and that's the idea behind it. Um, the other big group, which is getting more and more important, are um, women which are driving the business. Today, 80% of all purchasing deci decisions are done by women. 80%, imagine this. So it's not the CEO of the company who is doing the decisions. It's his wife. Um, we have a very crude discussion at the moment in Germany, um, which is related to how many, uh, how big should the percentage of women be which are in the management boards. And this is not a fair discussion, because um, women seek for higher education, and they certainly will take their place in the management boards. And thus, as a consequence, we will have more female business travelers. And also, female business tra travelers have different requirements on um, future airplanes. So they, they seek for more privacy in this very dense area. And we have to um, provide technologies um, to, to help them, to create an environment which is very cozy for our female business travelers. So um, these are the passenger segments. Let's talk a little about more about their requirements. So all of them are seek for active health promotion, the old um, and as well women. So again, another, another example in Germany, many women are doing yoga at the moment, very healthy, um, but I haven't seen that many um, guys in, in, inside these uh, yoga courses. So women, um, are very um, or seek for um, for healthy food and and that stuff and um, and so th this is a big trend. This is a big requirement from them. Um, at the same time, all of them are individuals, so we have to treat them them like individuals and not like payload. Mm -hmm. you, know, you have to talk to your structural engineers. Um, they they take um, human beings um, as payload, right? So. Um, we from the cabin innovation department, we uh, think that um, the individual requirements of um, the people need, need to be considered when designing an aircraft. Um, and this is also related to our female business travelers who want to be productive throughout the entire supply chain. 
maybe um, I want to do some, I want to prepare some emails um, in the sky when I'm traveling in an, inside an airplane. And that's already happening today, but it will, it will be much more in the future. And finally, imagine we are, we are in the year 2050 now. Um, today, everybody is using smartphones. So uh, many devices which um, attract us. And um, this will be a trend which we have to take um, in, into the air as well. And by using new devices like holography, as we have displayed this. And you know, the, these are the um, passenger needs. And we combined them with technology. And just to give you um, a short understanding where we, um, what we were looking at, we were looking at light, first of all, how to use light, how to bring more natural light to the passengers. We were looking at data. How can you get easy access to your private data account or to your private cloud account and use it uh, while traveling? Um, we are talking about structures, um, how to design structures and how to make structure, and finally, still, and this is an ongoing trend since many, many years, we are talking about material. If we do not have the right material, we cannot, we cannot push new structures and thus new innovations into the airplane. Um, I want to give you a concrete example. Let's compare the old world and the new world. Um, at the left side, you can see the old world. It's a milling process, uh, which is following the old design rules. And the right side, I will show you another example made from 3D printing and new design rules. Um, this here, for instance, is a bracket for an A380 crew rest compartment. A crew rest compartment is an area where the crew takes rests while being on long-haul flights um, inside an aircraft. Um, it follows the classical design rules. It's milled and it's very stable. You can see all these ribs there. And um, well, this is how we design um, our components today. In the future, it will be a little bit different. This is a, the same bracket designed for the same purpose. And it's made in a 3D printer. And it follows completely different design rules. Um, it's basically a completely computer um, generated design. You just define your boundary conditions. You, you tell the computer um, which kind of forces occur, how big is the space where the bracket should be. And then um, the um, computer helps you to de design this uh, new kind of bracket. And one thing is key in the aviation industry, and this is weight. And 3D printing helps us to reduce the weight by 50%. So the bracket at the left side has a weight of 1.2 kilos, and the new bracket at the right side has 0.6 kilos. And we will introduce this technology soon. So we will start printing parts for aircrafts made from metal. And this is the big dif uh, difference. Um, plastic parts are already flying today. Um, but our vision is a little, a little bit uh, bigger. Uh, when we created this um, kind of vision here, this new airframe structure, um, our, yeah, our, our colleagues from the structural design department um, have been a little bit scared about this. So um, do this and scare your colleagues. Something like this, be, be radical, um, because then they start thinking. Based on our approach, they, um, um, they have done their own investigations about these kind of structures, which was very, um, yeah, very helpful. Um, we we uh, created very positive results on this. Um, and this kind of structure requires new materials. And um, here, the ideas come from nature. So how does nature build uh, components? Um, here, you can see the DNA. It has a size of some nanometers. And it contains all the information which are required to build a large skeleton which is much larger than the DNA. And we have a um, bottom-up approach here, because all the informations to make the skeleton are inside the DNA. The other way around, we have a top-down approach as well, because you can train your muscles. You also can train your skeleton. And um, this takes influence later on on your DNA as well. So um, it's a new topic in uh, chemistry and in biology biology um, to understand how this mechanism works, but um, um, it's at least existing. So how, well, what are our building blocks in the aviation industry? Um, we probably could use um, carbon nanotubes. And we did some investigations that carbon nanotubes uh, tubes can grow inside a 3D printer. Why not? 
um, the structural properties are much better than um, like uh, using um, carbon fiber reinforced plastics. And the goal is clearly to have a large ri rivetless skeleton in the end of the day, which would save weight, of course, which makes the airplane more efficient and uh, which might be decrease the um, ticket prices. This would be great. Um, but how does this work in particular? So imagine you have these um, carbon nanotubes in there. They are growing. They are just growing in a 3D printer. In a laboratory, it works very well at the moment. And we have trillions of them. So they are aligned to kind of woods of um, carbon nanotubes. And then we do uh, morphology optimization. Um, so we optimize the substructures to transport energy um, or data. And then we use uh, this kind of um, optimization approach, which we have used for the bracket, to build up bigger and bigger components until the day that a company comes around and offers us a 3D printer, which has a size of 80 times 80 meters, right? So to print out an, an entire aircraft. Um, but this is just the big carrot which we put um, into the front of us. So this, this is an idea really for the year 2050. It works in the, in the laboratory, but um, at the moment we, we couldn't manufacture, of course, an entire airplane from, from this. But what does that make um, finally? We have the passenger requirements and we have the technology. And um, also here I want to show you a short movie. Um, which underlines a little bit um, how technology can take influence on the future passenger journey. So um, here you can see the structure a little bit. Um, and now we start entering into the aircraft th through a very wide central door. You check in just by putting your hand on, onto a digital screen and the airplane automatically connects you to the uh, data which are stored in the cloud. Um, luggage is um, always a big topic when you are inside an airplane. So how can we ease the, um, yeah, the, the to store your luggage somewhere? Um, you can leave it in the entrance area, for example. The cabin is very easy uh, to reconfigure and we are using morphing seats to adapt to the shape of the future passengers. So these are not only the, uh, the old and the women, uh, we also um, have obese passengers which like to fly as well. So um, here comes the luggage, so you can track your luggage uh, at any stage of your journey. And during the flight you can um, go back to the, to the boarding area inside the aircraft and we put a lot of digital surf surfaces there. Surfaces at at the floor, at the wall, at the ceiling, everywhere, to have a completely digital environment which is easy to, to reconfigure. So, for example, you can have a digital uh, golf challenge there. Uh, we already had a um, real putter challenge inside an AC20, which was quite funny. Um, you can make a conference room or at least, and this would be my preference, um, we, we could have a bar there, right? So um, you, you have a kind of sky lounge there, which, which is quite interesting, and we, I, th I think it's a great um, traveling experience. But the highlight is the vitalizing zone in front of the airplane. So we have this bionic structure, which is covered by uh, this biopolymer membrane, which can turn between transparent and opaque. Again, we have this very um, very nice seats here with integrated uh, sensors. When you're getting dehydrated, the sensor measures this and the stewardess comes along and offers you a gl um, glass of um, water. Um, the entire design is very responsive, so um, the seats follow the sun and when you're getting blinded by the sun and make a kind of gesture, then um, the whole thing, the whole membrane turns opaque. Um, in the front, there's something missing. We don't have a cockpit anymore. So uh, you can see this video at YouTube as well. Um, take, a, take notice from the um, pilot's comments. They were getting angry. So where's the cockpit? Um, there are two answers on this. Um, the first answer is that it's now in the cargo area. And the second answer is that in the future we don't need pilots anymore. Because, um, yeah, be, 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 look at drones. Yeah, right, they also fly autonomously. Um, but, um, yeah. <laughs> So um, our vision really is, 
it, it's not feasible at the moment. But it turns out that um, by introducing some small technologies today, we might reach this goal in the future, maybe in the year 2050, to create a completely new passenger journey, which makes um, aviation attractive and also from the environmental perspective uh, more responsible. Thank you very much.